Thank you for asking. Uh, the uh, first thing I need to do, though, is to uh, say that uh, it's not only an honor, but really a pleasure uh, to be with uh, people who uh, uh, value the sacrifices of those who have gone before us uh, today. And um, I really admire that, and I admire you for it. And then the other thing is uh, that, uh, before I begin, I need to make sure that everyone understands what the presentation is about because someone stopped me on the way in and they said, oh, Mr. Ireland, it's uh, so uh, wonderful that we're going to hear from you tonight about the new season of the television show, Jersey Shore. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he, he looked disappointed, but when... Uh, <coughs> He found out he wasn't going to get to meet Snooky either. Well, that was it. Um, well, he's not here now, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, as far as uh, uh, my uh, background uh, uh, goes, it's um, nothing, uh, you, you know, extraordinary. Uh, I grew up in uh, uh, Ventnor and, and Atlantic City. And um, I think, though, that uh, for all of us, um, whether or not uh, we've grown up uh, here or just, uh, you know, enjoy being in this area, that um, it really is a, a very uh, unique place. And I mean, you know, everybody in America thinks they live in a unique place, but uh, growing up surrounded by water uh, and being able to uh, take advantage of the old-fashioned um, enjoyments uh, for a kid, uh, we alternated our time between uh, uh, leaky, broken down old boats in the bay and, uh, you know, throwing um, the uh, thousands of uh, surf turkeys that uh, washed up on the, uh, the beach uh, um, when we weren't engaged otherwise. And it was just a, um, a wonderful time and um, I appreciate it more and more as time goes on. Uh, as far as um, uh, the rest of my life goes, <laughs> I uh, served for 15 years at, in charge of um, uh, police and fire dispatch for Egg Harbor Township. And um, I went on, um, well I should say at the same time, um, I was a, a volunteer firefighter uh, for the uh, Skullville uh, unit and uh, that was a, a great opportunity to uh, uh, served my community. I fought a few thousand fires uh, during that time and um, I, uh, I went on to uh, lead local government. Uh, can you say politics? <laughs> uh, well, I wasn't involved in politics, yeah. but um, I was seeking, uh, you know, more positive environment and you know what I mean. So, um, I started my own training and consulting business and I work with our nation's fire department officers, uh, primarily uh, under contract to the National Fire Academy uh, in Emmitsburg, Maryland. I've intentionally worked uh, in uh, each of the 50 states, uh, including making uh, many uh, educational uh, emergency runs to the states of Hawaii <coughs> and Alaska. Uh, somebody had to go. Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally. uh, so, um, you know, uh, uh, other than that, uh, it's just, uh, you know, my credentials are, are just, uh, you know, ones that, that would be primarily of interest uh, to those in emergency uh, services. Um, the book writing thing uh, uh, really uh, started um, uh, when uh, my, my uh, dad would take my sister and I fishing and crabbing in the, in the uh, uh, bays and the rivers in the vicinity here. Um, he would say, uh, well, uh, pull up the anchor, son. Uh, there's nothing biting here. Let's go over to this other place. And of course, I would have to say, well, why did they name it that, Dad? <laughs> and he would give me uh, his uh, uh, version of uh, how it, it came to pass. And I would say I've been collecting research, um, you know, uh, avidly. Uh, prior to the publication last uh, summer, September of, of this book, uh, for you know, at least 20 years, magazine articles, newspapers, and then I, uh, you know, hit the internet, uh, but found out, uh, as I'm sure uh, 
uh, you sound like uh, you're very well able researchers yourselves, that uh, there's no substitute for going to the main uh, repositories of the information, um, the county libraries and the reference section, and um, uh, places like the Atlanta County uh, Heritage. Uh, uh, so, um, and out of all that um, uh, came uh, my, my book, which is self-published. Um, and um, it, what a wonderful thing, uh, because uh, any, anybody who calls themselves a writer will tell you it's virtually impossible to, to get uh, you know, a publisher to uh, publish a book uh, to, today, unless it's got a lot of sex, crime, romance, and <laughs> whatever in it. You don't okay. have any of that in uh, um, I won't say that 100%. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, since uh, normally uh, I would do a one hour presentation, but since uh, half of that is more apropos to uh, your liking, uh, I better uh, uh, get into it. And um, I can say that uh, one thing uh, uh, that uh, our show or rather my presentation is actually about is the authentic Jersey Shore and that is the one that uh, those who uh, have gone before us uh, had uh, given unique designations to because they were so important in their lives the places um, of the uh, place names of the Jersey Shore and one of the things that I uh, found out in uh, doing this kind of research is that you better be darn careful about presumptions that you might make as to how places got their name. Uh, for example, uh, and, and, and I should, should say that uh, I've organized the program uh, into categories. And so the, the first category is places uh, that are easy to make uh, inaccurate presumptions about. And uh, a prime example is the boardwalk in Atlantic City. I never questioned how it uh, got its name. It was obvious, isn't it? It's the boards that you walk on. Mm -hmm. The press of Atlantic City informed us within the last year in a feature article that actually it was named for Alexander Boardman, who constructed the first boardwalk, along with the owner of the United States Hotel, Atlantic City's first hotel, uh, in order to keep uh, the sand uh, being tracked in from, uh, uh, from their patrons onto the carpets of the Pullman cars and, and uh, the lobby of the uh, hotel. Likewise, um, the city of Longport. Now, I've spent uh, you know, many visits there, had friends there, um, uh, went uh, uh, fishing there often uh, uh, on the old uh, Carl's Pier which I believe was the uh, Absecon Island terminus of the uh, railroad line that ran to uh, Ocean City. And, um, well, you know, you can see it's, it's such a narrow portion of Absecon Island, narrow and long, and of course loaded with maritime activity, uh, especially on the Bay side. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that Longport was named uh, for the uh, John Long family, uh, who were uh, the uh, first uh, settlers. That's right, I uh, wouldn't get his first name right. And uh, today, if anyone asks you uh, to meet them uh, anywhere between 1st and 10th Street in Longport, <laughs> you better be prepared for a fishing trip. Take a boat with you, uh, because they're out there in the uh, Great Bay Inlet, uh, having been uh, inundated and uh, uh, submerged in a, uh, uh, one of our famous northeasters in 1913. Wow. Now, uh, the very name of uh, our state is uh, also something that uh, tends, I think most people believe that uh, the name of our state came solely from honoring the Isle of Jersey in uh, Great Britain, but you would only be 50% right. Uh, Sir uh, uh, George Carteret uh, named 
his lands before they became a colony in America or in, in the New World, East and West Jersey, oddly enough, our area here was in, in West Jersey. And um, yes, you know, he named it uh, for his defense of the Isle of Jersey uh, during or against the uh, Spanish Armada. It wasn't until 1702 when um, he uh, applied uh, to the uh, King of England to become a royal colony that he combined East and West Jersey into a new Jersey. Oh, okay. So that's the rest of the story or the rest of the name anyways. Yeah. Uh, here at uh, Sugar Hill, with the Sugar Hill Inn, um, is, uh, of course, in May's Landing, uh, which, by the way, uh, right at, along um, this uh, bulkhead here, uh, over 100 prizes of war were stripped of their goods and some of them even dismantled by uh, our uh, patriotic uh, uh, privateers operating uh, in the area. <coughs> and um, as far as uh, the presumption is concerned, uh, I've seen uh, several uh, uh, sites on the internet that claim that uh, May's Landing uh, was another one of those places that was named after Cornelius May, the Dutch explorer who sailed into these inlets and bays in our uh, two counties, and as so many other things such as Cape May, Cape May Courthouse, May, uh, um, Well, the other names escape me, uh, but you know uh, there are many names uh, uh, named after him. Um, but the uh, fact of the matter is that May's Landing was named after George May, who was a local dock builder and ship uh, builder. Uh, now, that uh, Cornelius May, the explorer, uh, he uh, must have been uh, pretty much impressed with himself because uh, he named the Cape after uh, his last name, uh, which he spelled, or which was spelled, uh, M-E-Y. Uh, but he also named the Southern Cape of Delaware Bay, which you and I know today as Cape Henlopen, uh, after his first name. It was originally Cape Cornelius. And uh, to continue uh, that uh, travesty, uh, actually, uh, Cape Henlopen is a corruption of the name Hen, H-I-N, Henlopen, who was a trading partner of Cornelius May. Unfortunately, uh, this beautiful old uh, sacred building uh, burned down about two weeks ago, I read it in, in the press, um, in Swinton, in Cape May County. Now, uh, it might be just me, uh, it might be, you know, just my, uh, another one of the uh, gaps in my education. But I always thought that uh, the suffix T-O-N, such as in Swington, was short or a contraction for town. But Swinton, it refers to Swain Station. It was a prominent place on the railroad line <coughs> in Cape May County. And um, on the way down to Cold Spring Village uh, this uh, spring uh, to do this presentation, I passed by in Sweden a convenience store uh, that uh, they had named uh, Swain, Swainton Station. So I wonder if the owners realized that they actually named it Swain Station Station. Yes. yes. <laughs> Now, uh, this is um, part of the old turnpike into Atlantic City, paralleling the Black Horse Pike, US 40. And um, it is in uh, this section right here is in West Atlantic City. And uh, likewise, um, as far as the presumptions go, um, it was not named, that is, West Atlantic City was not named because it was the western part of Atlantic City. It was named because it was the West Atlantic stop on the seashore 
railroad. Mm -hmm. Lee, excuse me. Sure. Yeah. Is that when you mentioned the word turnpike? Is what we're looking back at an old roadbed as opposed to next to a railroad bed? I believe it is. Uh -huh. However, I uh, have challenged <coughs> myself to uh, research it uh, further uh, to to make sure I'm not um, you know falling victim to my own caution. Mm -hmm. you know, be careful about the presumptions you make. And uh, wouldn't it be nice to take a uh, metal detector and to see how many you know coins might have fallen off of uh, <laughs> trains or um, other memorabilia uh, from this route into Atlantic City? Uh, it probably, uh, well, I shouldn't say uh, that it, it certainly is one of the earliest routes into Atlantic City. Um, 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 I'm told, though, that um, uh, the, uh, really uh, the first access to Abseekin Island uh, was an Indian trail that uh, ran down Florida Avenue from the back. And that was the first access that any people uh, had. Uh, so certainly this had to be one of the earliest ones as well. Uh, I better uh, move it along here. Because, uh, uh, former names. Uh, I found uh, a uh, collection of uh, place names that um, share some interesting information about their uh, former names. Um, this uh, uh, historic uh, Masonic temple uh, in the uh, city of Linwood. Uh, well, Linwood uh, was originally known as Pearville, and then um, uh, Leedsville, and um, getting a little too cocky, you know, getting too far away from my notes here. Um, Yeah, um, the uh, towns of Leedsville <coughs> and Seaview uh, wanted to join together to make the town of Geneva. But as we find so many times, and um, I'm sure some of you here have recognized it and probably followed up on it, um, but I think um, it would really be rich uh, to do a, uh, a fairly serious study of the role of the U.S. Postal Service uh, on the naming, not only the naming, but uh, really the um, um, uh, welfare of communities uh, that um, uh, actually uh, uh, could not continue to uh, thrive because of uh, something I heard earlier uh, tonight, rejection of the postal office uh, for one reason or another. I think, Norman, uh, you were telling me that uh, uh, Unionville was uh, rejected by the post office uh, for Port Republic. That's correct. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, um, okay, so it's rejected now and it can't be Geneva. So it was left to the ladies of the Grange to uh, meet and determine what the name of uh, the city would be. And when they came out, they announced that it would be Linwood in respect of the preponderance of linden trees in the area. Now, I've never <coughs> consciously seen a uh, linden tree, but I heard you talking about carving, and carvers know it as basswood. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a big, beautiful, shade tree. So that's how Linwood got its, uh, got its name there. <laughs> um, now, uh, Pleasantville, you've got your choice. Uh, two uh, versions of how it got its name. And uh, one of them holds that... Uh, <clears throat> That's a nice shot of Pleasantville. Yes, down by the Indeed it is. Uh, yeah. um, relatively close to the uh, old high school. Old high school. Yeah. And uh, actually, the, your comment is a perfect segue into... Um, uh, one of the versions of how it got its name, um, and uh, again, I, I don't, especially uh, with a, a distinguished group like yours, um, I don't want to uh, be inaccurate here. Dr. Daniel Ingersoll, who was uh, prominent in the area, named it literally for its good views. 
Now, when I uh, say that to some groups, they say, what good news? Yeah. But they are there. And, and especially, excuse me, anywhere along the marshlands. Um, I, I know a lot of relatives and others who have visited here from away uh, find it very plain and boring, and, and especially in the wintertime, you know, uh, when, when the meadows are all browned over. I find it gorgeous myself, okay? But um, the views are there, and, and uh, moving it right along here, uh, there's another uh, version uh, that says Daniel Lake, who was the proprietor of the first general store in the area, uh, wanted to uh, put up a sign um, uh, with the name uh, of that community. Uh, that is, uh, he, he had the uh, ability to name it. And uh, walked across the street uh, to uh, the uh, carpenter, the local carpenter, uh, to buy a board and um, made a deal with him that if he uh, would give him the board, uh, that he could name uh, the, the place of, of the town. And, and so in that version, uh, Pleasantville uh, uh, was uh, chosen. Didn't they used to call it Lake Town? Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, because uh, that really is the uh, category here, uh, former names. So uh, Pleasantville uh, is the smorgasbord uh, champion of uh, former names, uh, including Adamstown, Lakestown, Morton Town, Town, and Smith Landing. Yes. Talk about not being able to make a point. You know, when you look at the pictures too, and you think about the time they were they were made, and when they came up with that name, it was Pleasantville. And you know, the times have changed. You know, just like the times have changed in Atlantic, it all of our communities, you know, it was Pleasantville. And, and I have to note, uh, the, uh, the other day, uh, that uh, I uh, drove down uh, uh, just north of the uh, Atlantic County complex. Mm -hmm. There are very wide streets there with beautiful shade trees mm -hmm. on both sides. Um, and attractive homes, maybe they've seen better days, but you know, they, uh, it's still a pleasant area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Likewise, uh, Pomona, uh, which is uh, uh, the name of the Roman goddess of uh, fruits, uh, was formerly called Dowdy Station. And although I haven't documented it, I believe that um, uh, along with Dowdy Road in that uh, same general uh, vicinity, uh, it seems uh, likely uh, that uh, General uh, Enoch uh, Dowdy who was a lumberman and a railroad entrepreneur in the area, uh, uh, was you know, named in honor of him. Uh, this is just a, uh, a, a grape uh, arbor, of course, um, in the uh, city of uh, uh, Rio Grande. Now, uh, it formerly was called Hildreth, uh, who was another early entrepreneur in uh, Cape May County. Crandall Town, the yes. O. And Lemmings. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe some of you are familiar with uh, the uh, beautiful Lemmings Run uh, Botanical uh, Gardens. Okay, so I believe there's an association there. Rio Grande was named by Aaron Lemming the Seventh. Uh, he was the uh, descendant of Christopher Lemming, who is the patriarch of all people in uh, Cape May County, um, with the name of uh, uh, Lemming. Now, let me warn you that when uh, you're in that area of Rio Grande. Be careful in pronouncing its name in the company of uh, local people. Many will swear and um, you know uh, say that it's fighting words if you pronounce it any other way than Rio Grande. Rio. However, I see some heads shaking. Yeah, I know what you mean, Lee. Um, I have never had anyone uh, give a rationale for that. Um, you know, why uh, that is proper and Rio Grande is improper. Now, um, as I said, uh, Christopher uh, Lemming, or pardon me, uh, Aaron Lemming, the seventh, uh, uh, named the town uh, during a period when the Mexican-American War was going on, 
and taken place along the Rio Grande River in various uh, parts. So I've traveled that river uh, uh, personally from Albuquerque almost to the Gulf of Mexico. And um, I know enough Spanish uh, to know that, um, you know, that isn't involved. And that, you know, Rio isn't some kind of Spanish pronunciation. Um, so, you know, I wish somebody would finally tell me, well, well why, other than just uh, custom? They didn't know any better. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> now, you would be in uh, really big trouble. <laughs> But the family uh, of uh, L-E-A-M-I-N-G calls their, their name Leaning. Oh, the family does, yeah. Uh, uh, that's uh, um, uh, good information for me, thank you. You know, I, I also messed up in that presentation uh, at Cold Spring Village um, where the uh, Cape May Star reporter had to uh, uh, correct me that uh, the name was Skellinger Landing, and I'm Schellinger. And as I so crudely pronounce it, yes. I think I can give you a hint on that on your on your Rio. When the people in the 15, 16, 17 hundreds were bringing Latin and Greek, but particularly Greek, into the English language and translating things at the Renaissance, they tended to take the short I sound, the E sound, like Rio, and they translated almost every one of them into long I sounds because that's the way they would have handled it in England at that time. Oh. And so if I ever pronounce all the names in the New Testament that end uh, that have I's in them the proper way, my brand new Greek students, ancient Greek students, look at me and say, why don't you pronounce it right? And I say, I am. You're going to find out that there is no long I in Greek. Mr. Goss, I believe I now know why they keep you around. <laughs> Thank you for that. And, and I certainly uh, am, am going to remember that. Uh, a former name of the uh, city of Folsom in Atlanta County is Woolly Field and also New Germany. Uh, Folsom was uh, formed from portions of Buena Vista Township in 1906. And um, then we quickly go to uh, the next category, and that is uh, names that were mangled over the years. And um, what we're uh, looking at here is probably one of the most uh, notorious ones in Atlanta County, uh, although it's a very uh, uh, complicated uh, photo, I understand. But uh, I'm referring to Moss Mill Road in Dalloway Township. Morse's Mill Road. I'll be doing the presentation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a corrupt uh, uh -huh. That's one of the versions. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, I can tell you that there's no more moss on Moss Mill Road than any other road in the area. And that this is Morse's Mill Creek as it runs underneath of Morse Mill Road into the mill pond at Port Republic where I believe it's Robert Morse uh, had his mill, a uh, part of James Morse, Morse's Mill Road. Yeah. Uh, moving right along, this is a, a beautiful, uh, mature development of Marvin Gardens. Uh, yes, and we all, the world is familiar with it from the Parker Brothers uh, uh, board game Monopoly. And uh, those of you might remember. Uh, that it was actually misspelled by them right. as if it was uh, the name, the first name of a man uh, spelled M-A-R-V-I-N. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's spelled M-A-R-V-E-N. It's a compound word uh, for the two cities that the development straddles, Margate and Venice. Now, Parker Brothers actually uh, issued an apology to the citizens of Margate but they didn't change the board game. <laughs> so Marvin. And, and then we come to um, the uh, uh, corrupted uh, name for Delaware Bay. In 1610, English Captain Samuel Argyle uh, sailed into Delaware Bay. Uh, he was, um, uh, what, under the patronship of uh, the um, proprietor of the Virginia colony and mistakenly thought that the bay was the northern border 
of the Virginia colony. And so he named it after his boss, Lord D. La War. Lord D. La War, uh, which is our today Delaware Bay. Hmm. Here's another example with Dias Creek. Uh, I believe it's in uh, Dennis Township in Cape May County. Uh, gosh, you know, if, if there was ever any people looking for a project, recreate those wonderful old signs. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, um, when, and, and this is a point that I uh, wanted to make before, uh, because you really are an area type group. <laughs> and yeah, you would appreciate that um, the way that uh, towns were named oftentimes, and this is probably true across America, is that the first uh, European uh, settlers came in and uh, the first family or person to be successful um, became prominent, obviously, in the area, and enough to uh, establish the first general story. When others came in and wanted a piece of the pie, of the you know, prosperity uh, of the area, and uh, they figured it was time to get regular mail service, well, the general store was the logical location, and the family that owned the general store and was most prominent raised their hand and said, well, it's okay if you name it after us. So we see this time and again, and this happened uh, also in uh, uh, Dias uh, Creek. Uh, uh, however, um, it was the Dyer family, D-Y-E-R, whose name was corrupted by uh, an inattentive official. I don't want to say it was the Postal Service. You know, I like getting my mail. <laughs> you know? but, uh, uh, we see this happening uh, time and again all over the country. Uh, here's an interesting one, I think, uh, is uh, Jimmy Leeds Road. Uh, that sign is an imposter, and that's because uh, the legal name, the original name, is Jim Leeds Road. In fact, you can travel further west on the road, and you'll actually see the signs say Jim Leeds Road. Now, uh, uh, of course, the uh, uh, the uh, road uh, was named uh, for a descendant of Jeremiah Leeds who was the uh, first uh, permanent settler in Atlantic City. And um, if you're ever going over the uh, expressway bridge, the last one by the bus station, the train station, that park, Columbus Park, uh, was, is the homestead, or was the homestead of uh, Jeremiah Leeds. You know, maybe you're over there picking up somebody from one of the casinos or something. Uh, the, uh, the way that we uh, know also that uh, Jimmy leads uh, the Jimmy portion doesn't fly is that uh, back in the olden days it was uh, uncommon to use the diminutive form of a man's name. In other words, you could say, um, uh, that, or rather they would say, uh, for example, for the name Robert, they might say Bob, but not Bobby. Mm -hmm. uh, for Frank, or I should say for Francis, Frank, but not Frankie. Mm -hmm. It was very uncommon. And so there's a little bit of justification for Jim rather than Jimmy Leeds Road. Uh, giving you a credit to um, uh, the uh, people who are here when uh, you know, Europeans uh, came over, uh, as we look at uh, Dr. Uh, Pitney, the uh, developer of Atlantic City, uh, his house is on Shore Road in Apsekin. Uh, which was uh, originally an Indian trail. And I'm sure you, you probably know that in uh, colonial times, Shore Road in this area was called the King's Highway. Mm -hmm. And I have also run across documentation, but let it slip out of my hands, I don't have it, uh, that in Cape May County, Shore Road was called the Queen's Highway. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, she had to get hers. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, here uh, is uh, the Penny Pot stream in the Penny Pot section of Folsom, and it is um, uh, alleged that uh, the uh, area was named because this is where uh, Indians buried uh, pots of pennies 
um, for trade, you know, in the process of trade uh, with the English. Uh, now, coins have English uh, coins have been found here, but I'm sure they've been found in many, many other areas as well. Uh, this is uh, the uh, county courthouse uh, statue in, in uh, Mays Landing, looking towards, or at least in the direction of Lake Lenape. Now, I know it's politically correct uh, to pronounce uh, the Lenny Lenape tribe uh, differently, uh, but I'm old school. That is the time I uh, swam in uh, Lake Lenape, and that's it, I'm not changing. <coughs> so, uh, from the Great Egg Harbor River, proceeding south to Cape May Point, the uh, bands of Lenny Lenape Indians were the Takahos, the Tyrans, the Tyascans, and the Ketchumetchis. Now, if you're familiar with uh, King Nummi and uh, the King Nummi Trail, uh, King, or rather Nummi Island in the Wildwood, uh, North Wildwood uh, uh, area, um, they are named in respect for uh, Tom Nummi, who was uh, the king of the Ketchumetchis. And uh, of course, they were here when uh, the uh, Europeans uh, came. In fact, they were doing the same thing, fishing and whaling. And uh, I've been showing you the uh, cover of the book, uh, which is also on the uh, bookmark. Uh, I, everyone did receive a bookmark, didn't they? Okay. Yes? Okay, yeah. good. Um, uh, the, uh, you know, the bookmark shows the uh, cover of the book and, and a view uh, from the uh, ferry uh, uh, there, uh, the Cape May Loose Ferry, um, and it's overlooking uh, the uh, uh, portion of the uh, original uh, first location of the, uh, the European whalers um, in a place called Town Bank. And they would uh, spy uh, for signs of whale uh, from those dunes and then um, uh, go out and uh, hunt them. Back in those days, uh, the whales felt secure enough to actually enter Delaware Bay. And there is a 1635 uh, record of a whale being sold uh, to a European uh, by uh, the Indian tribe down there. I believe that would be the uh, Ketchum Veggies. No, here it is, uh, you know, as I speak. Um, now, as I said, the ferry terminal is uh, located right there, uh, just to the right, if you will, in the Cape May Canal. Well, the Cape May Canal, you all know, was dug out to uh, help American shipping during World War II so that uh, they wouldn't have to run the uh, perilous uh, Delaware Bay route into the ocean. Uh, but not a lot of people know that it was New England Creek, right there at the ferry terminal, uh, that was dug out in order to create the Cape Canal. And that's where the European whalers operated out of, New England Creek. So when you're getting on that ferry, okay, uh, you're literally walking uh, in, in the uh, shoes uh, of the whalers. Uh, this wonderful photograph, I'm sorry, <laughs> I really couldn't find anything else on Indian Trail Road in Cape May County, running from uh, Dennisville to Swainton, um, Route 618, uh, and it is an actual authentic Indian Trail, um, which I think uh, you can uh, see today um, the uh, uh, Native Americans were doing the same thing that tourists are doing today, looking for the shortest route you know, to get to the, to the beaches and the cool weather uh, over on the ocean side. That's exactly where this trail runs. Now, I uh, better be careful about my information uh, because uh, this is Tuckahoe, and I understand somebody here mentioned to me tonight uh, that they uh, live in Tuckahoe. And um, uh, I came across um, a, um, uh, recently in uh, Beck's book, uh, The uh, More Forgotten Towns of South Jersey, where he says that um, originally uh, Tuckahoe was on the opposite side of the river. 
for which it uh, stands now, and its name was Williamsburg. Uh, I also... Um, Williamsburg is correct, but it wasn't on the opposite side, it was on the southern side. And I have documentation I can send you if you want to know it, because the Methodist Church was known as the William, the Methodist Church in Williamstown, and that's on the southern side. Yeah, I wish you would, and uh, uh, I can say a point blank, and it would be very foolish of me uh, to make pretend that, uh, you know, the people who live there, so to speak, uh, you know, aren't the, the best informed. So I defer the actual to you and anyone else. The north side was known as Champions Landing. Now, uh, if you're serious, um, and at one time it was known as North Tuckahoe, and the other was South Tuckahoe, and they have all kinds of names. There was a uh, early map that uh, shows that. Uh, the creators, yeah, my oh, emails on that. Oh, okay, good. Um, the people who were uh, inattentive uh, to the uh, names of the uh, Indians and their places uh, because they spelled uh, Tuckahoe Turkey Ho, H O E. Now, there are a lot of uh, religious uh, uh, connections and. Um, uh, Norm, if you want to just do that any anytime you, know, you feel like we need to do it, I'll just skip probably right to another, the end. Probably another four or five minutes. Okay, very good. Uh, I think there are a couple of uh, items here uh, uh, that I can highlight. Uh, the Cape May Point Lighthouse was um, originally, well, I shouldn't even say uh, uh, refer to the lighthouse, I should say where the lighthouse is now was originally called Stites Beach, S-T-I-T-E-S. -E Alexander Wilden, who was a Philadelphia build, uh, businessman, married into the Stites family and took charge of the property. He named this area where the lighthouse eventually went, Seagrove, and intended it to be a religious community just for one particular faith. Once again, our friend the Postal Service steps in and says, not in America, you know. If you've got a restriction like that, uh, you're welcome to have that community, but if uh, other Americans are prohibited on the basis of religion uh, from living there, no post office for you. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, Ocean City was uh, founded by the three uh, Lake brothers who were minister, ministers, in addition to a fourth minister, William Burrell. And, um, as it, as the sign says, uh, they founded it as a uh, temperance uh, r resort. So when you drive down the, the streets today, uh, you'll come across Simpson, Asbury, Wesley Avenues, all prominent members of their faith that, that they have honored. Uh, here in uh, Townsend's Inlet, John Townsend uh, was fleeing from the New York colony, from the New York colony, and uh, because he was harboring dissidents. And so uh, he hot-footed it down uh, here to the place uh, eventually uh, named after him. And uh, I think it's nice uh, that um, uh, while other areas of the state and the, and the country um, brag about their Underground Railroad and how you know, their role in uh, uh, tolerating people who were different from them, uh, that uh, we've got a claim to uh, the same kind of uh, consideration. And uh, Norman, this is uh, the one that I was uh, saying to you during dinner. Uh, this is the Molica River. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, new uh, Parkway Bridge is, is just off to the left. And what we're looking at, roughly, uh, following the river, um, is... Uh, The next place that I want to talk about, which I usually introduce by saying, you know that feeling when you decide whether or not you're going to go to church services the next day, that if you do, you can't sleep in, you can't, uh, you know, you have to postpone other work, you got to get dressed up, and, 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 et cetera. Or, uh, as uh, Martin Simpson uh, once asked uh, Homer if he was going to church today, he said, I can't. I have a lot of work to do around the bed today. <laughs> well, compare that to what the Quakers from Leedsville, near Smithville, 
uh, uh, went through in order to get to uh, Meeting House and, and uh, their services um, because we're looking out at uh, Swimming Over Point. And that's where they swam their horses before Bridge for Ferry service uh, was available uh, in order to get to the uh, Quaker Meeting House uh, in. Uh, in uh, uh, actually, Tucker didn't uh, see information I had, but mm -hmm. it, it might be in New Gretna. Um, yeah, let me uh, move right to, to the end here. The meeting house in Tucker burnt down for 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I just got the uh, high sign, so let me just give you the, uh, well, the Mullica River, not named for an Indian, named for Eric Mullica, mm -hmm. uh, a man from Finland and an employee of the Swedes uh, who. Uh, Dis discovered the area as a European and uh, lived in Lower Bank and also uh, later on moved to what we now know as Mullica Hill. All right, so um, the number one most interesting place name is the Jersey Shore communities themselves. And I say this because Dr. Maurice Beasley wrote the definitive history of Cape May County in the mid 1800s. And he stated that uh, while it was not formally documented, that tradition has long held that during that terrible winter of 1776, when Washington had no meat to feed his troops in Valley Forge, that the people of the shore communities sent dry clams and oysters through the British blockade and thus feeding uh, the troops who went on to start winning the war. So, as I conclude, we could actually say that the very freedoms that we enjoy today were made responsible by the good old Jersey Shore surf turkey and piss plant. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have been flipping through the book at the same time, following him through the book, and every time I'm following him, it's hard because I see something out of the corner of my eye that's fascinating, and so my ADD is running at <laughs> full speed tonight. I just want to recommend this to you. This is a, probably the neatest little book I have seen in ages, and there's some stuff in here that really plays on us. I would like to get you know, you may have just answered a question for me in that last thing where you showed the memorial at Chestnut Neck and you talked about shipping the uh, clams and oysters up to Valley Forge. Yes, sir. The fact of the matter is that one, one thing I have not been able to pinpoint is why month after month after month between the big areas that our battalion was involved in, between the Trenton and the Red Bank and then the Chestnut Neck skirmish and then what looks like they were probably at Monmouth Courthouse as well. But in between, they keep sending company after company up to the river in Philadelphia, long after there's nobody to guard and they're guarding supply trains and everything else. And maybe, just maybe, they were guarding those plants. <laughs> so uh, I'd be, in, I'd be well, interested <coughs> in hearing your source on that someday. Um, we're fortunate in that it is one line and uh, I'll certainly be glad to get you and uh, your, your membership uh, through you uh, the resource uh, because um, it's uh, very easily attainable. And uh, I'm only assuming uh, that uh, Dr. Beasley um, was a descendant or uh, probably the progenitor of uh, in, you know the Beasley's Point area, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, so. Um, it's a pristine source as far as uh, Dr. Beasley goes. Because uh, yes. he not only was a professional in those times, but all you have to do is to read one page of uh, his work. And um, 
Yeah, you know it's uh, it, it's good stuff. I'm going to ask that we, that we uh, in our Q&A, that we allow the waitress to get our desserts at the same time, so if that wouldn't be too disturbing to you. And One of the things I've been trying to prove is a story that goes along with uh, Jeremiah Smith, who was uh, second major in the 3rd Battalion, that he uh, ran supplies to Washington at Valley Forge. It would be interesting if this was part of the, uh, the, the whole operation. It's, I, I think...